the things that were working 20 years ago, the things that were working really, really well for destination marketers five years ago are not going to be the same things that successful tourism marketing people are going to be doing in the next three to five years. We're at a place in time where the successful programs of just a few years ago are no longer going to be relevant in um, the next three to five years. So if I can help all destination marketers think that way and, and work that way and then learn from each other as they're exploring and coming up with new ideas, then we'll all be better off. Welcome, everybody, once again to the Destination Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Stoker. Excited to be with you on the week of Thanksgiving. You won't hear this till a couple weeks after Thanksgiving, but... Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a shortened week, but we're, we're really excited to bring another episode to you. We, we've got a special guest today, and, and I'll get to him in just a minute. But before we dive in too far, I want to remind everybody, if you haven't already, join the Destination Marketers LinkedIn group. We're getting more and more people every day. We're sharing insights. We just shared the results of the Oregon campaign in there last week, and it turned out really great. I actually had one of our friends from Italy that's listening to the show asking a couple follow-up questions. We were able to get with Kevin and get answers for them as a result of posting that question. So join the Destination Marketers LinkedIn group if you haven't. And then if you have specific questions for the show or, or specific questions for me, just email Destination Marketing Podcast at relicagency.com and we'll either get your topic on the show. If you have a suggested guest, maybe we'll bring the guest on the show. But send us direct messages that way, and, and we can make sure that we get those answered. But really excited about our guest today. Uh, he is the president and CEO of Connect Travel. His name is Will Seckham. Will, welcome to the show. Hey, Adam. Great to be here. I'm looking forward to, to logging on and listening to Kevin's episode. He, he and I have, uh, have crossed paths for years in the tourism marketing business. Oh, he he was a great interview. Really, I was I was a little disappointed because we had s technical difficulties that we've never had with any other episode. So Kyle, our producer, had a little bit more of a challenging job cutting it all together. I thought it turned out great, but uh, I would have liked to even go deeper with Kevin. But but because of the technical difficulties, that's kind of where we ended up. But he he was great, and their campaign is just fantastic. Yeah, they're doing great work. Well, awesome. We have a little bit of a icebreaker we do when we bring people on the show before we just get right into the meat and potatoes. So uh, I, I want to ask you, this is a travel podcast. So tell me, what is your dream destination? If you could go anywhere in the world, where would it be? Well, you know, for the last 30 years, it's it's always been someplace that I'm representing, right? So now I get to talk freely about wh where I really want to travel and not just where, I, where I'm promoting. So That's right. Um, you're not beholden anymore. Yeah, right? I'm not beholden to anybody. I, I would have to say that if I would like to go back to Lake Como. I absolutely loved the one day I spent there and I'd like to explore it a little bit more. And where is that? In Italy. In, In Italy. Italy. Okay. Yeah. Now, what makes Lake Como special? Ah, you know, the history, the mountains, the lake, the beauty. It's a, it's an extraordinary place. I've, I've fallen in love with some of that northern Italy area from Chianti up to Milan and got to spend a day in, in Como. And it was, uh, it was something that lit a fire. Someday I'll go back. No question. So is that maybe your favorite place you've ever been then? Ah, you know, it, that's a hard one to say. <laughs> Very, very different. You know, when you uh, grow up in Colorado and get to see all the incredible mountain towns, there's an, an incredible power to the uh, to the mountains and the um, and the beauty there. You kind of flip that to being in the on the beach and spent in promoting you know attractions and destinations and beaches. And there's an incredible power to to being on the water. And then you go to a place like Rome or Florence or Milan and you see some of the incredible history. I just returned from London and Edinburgh and just seeing the castles and the history of the highlands. It's a, you know, there's, there's something powerful about uh, all kinds of travel and, and something special that I think you take out of any kind of vacation. Well, and that, that probably speaks to you being a lifer in the industry, right? You, you enjoy all aspects of it. So wh whatever it is that you're, that you're doing, you, you enjoy it. I, I feel the same way. All right. So the, you know, the, the power of travel in my mind is just being able to see new cultures and understanding uh, new destinations and the, and the people that um, have, have made those places so special. I think there's an incredible power in learning about history and uh, just traveling back from Edinburgh and understanding the, um, the amazing culture and history of a, of a destination over 
hundreds and hundreds of years is extraordinarily powerful. Um, I think there's an ex- amazing power in travel and the connections that you get and the connections that you make with new new cultures, new people, new ideas, new thinking. And as a, a father of four and a husband, I think probably the, the most powerful thing that travel does is just open your eyes and explore and create incredible bonds and memories with the, with your family. Yeah, you know, I've got young kids. I, I actually just recently became a father of four. I guess I was a father of three for a long time, and I just became a father of a fourth. But uh, we congratulations! We're, thank you very much. We're we're getting to the point where we can kind of go do stuff with our kids, and and they get it. You know, uh, we, we've done Disneyland a couple of times. I, my oldest three are girls, and my youngest is a boy. So watching them at Disneyland is just crazy and you're down in Florida you probably did the Disney World thing plenty when when your kids were going through that phase um, but I just took my daughter to uh, on a whitewater rafting trip uh, in Vernal Utah and on the way there they stop and that you see these petroglyphs up on the mountain and we actually hike up and the, the guide gave us a little tour of it and to watch my daughter have it click you know uh, of you know these people lived here thousands of years ago and and the the things that that they wrote on the mountain and everything it was just it's a different experience sharing learning experiences like that with your kids is just different isn't it yeah it is and 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 i i'm in a maybe a different age bracket but i took my youngest uh with me to london and scotland along with my wife the first time she's traveled with me in 20 some years on a business trip uh, to world travel market not too long ago and uh, we spent uh three days up in Edinburgh, Scotland, and doing the same thing is remarkable, right? When you get to see that, you know, the, the these buildings and people, the lives, the lives they lived and the history that they, uh, you know, that was in those places for thousands and thousands of years. And, the you know, exploring a castle is pretty cool with a 17-year-old daughter, but it's also pretty cool going to a pub and having her order a cider and get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's great. You know, I guess to experience all those firsts is, is, is just mm-hmm. a lot of fun to be a part of that with your kids. That's right. Tell me, you're obviously in the industry and, and we're going to get to your role and everything, but tell me a little bit about your background and how you ended up in the tourism industry. You've got a long career in the industry. Um, how did it come about? You know, I think one of the things about travel is uh, is it, it tends to um, people get into this business because of passion uh, in one way or the other. I think uh, more so than the traditional business route in a lot of ways. Uh, and I was I was born and raised in Colorado. I learned how to ski when I was three, and skiing was my uh, was my thing. After you know, organized college, high school sports were were done, and um, I had the opportunity to start uh, start as a sales guy for Vale and Beaver Creek Resorts out of college. Uh, and was uh, was out representing Vail and Beaver Creek to meeting planners, travel agents, tour operators in seven states and in the U.S. And that really kicked me into the the travel business. Uh, you know, originally I was in the ski business, and ultimately over uh, a couple different ski areas and running marketing at uh, Loveland Ski Area, where I crossed paths with Kevin Wright, who uh, I think three or four years later, became after I had left uh, Loveland, became the marketing director there as well. Yeah, Will, I'm going to stop you there real quick. It almost seems like the ski industry, especially in Colorado, is the gateway drug to the tourism industry because we've had several people we've interviewed here on the podcast that they're like, oh man, I started in skiing and then it evolved into being in the, the tourism industry. So it's, it's kind of fun to hear that that's your path as well because skiing really does seem to be that gateway into into the passion for the entire industry. I think you, you look at it, certainly people that are coming up in the Rocky Mountain West, that is the, you know, that was the industry in travel and tourism, certainly at the time, right? That's where, uh, you know, that was the one driver that was bringing people uh, from out of state and out of the country uh, into the into the U.S. for that that incredible activity and the, the sport and passion of skiing. So that was, that's the entry point there, um, you know, that or the hotel industry in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, but, yeah. but if, you know, now living in Florida, if you're, you know, you come to Florida, you're, you're probably starting, uh, at a sea world or a Disney world or a universal and, and that's your entry point. And if you find a, a pathway through that business, um, there's incredible opportunities and directions where that, where those careers can, you know, from an entry level job can take you up into a, an amazing career. And there's some extraordinary stories of 
people starting off as, you know, lift operators, Roger Dow, the president and CEO of the U.S. Travel Association, the spokesman for the industry uh, in the United States, started as a lifeguard at a pool in, you know, in Florida. So <laughs> it's an amazing industry and a, a lot of opportunities to, uh, to create memories for people. Absolutely. Okay. So let, let's talk career-wise then. Once you, you, you were at Loveland Ski Area, uh, and then you kind of moved into another portion of the industry. Do you want to tell us about yeah, that? Yeah, you know, it, it was funny. And in the ski business at the time, you know, I was the director of marketing mountain services at Loveland, which is probably the coolest ski area experience I've ever uh, I've ever been around. Loved it. Had the ski in, ski out office and had a blast. And it was the fastest growing ski area in the, in the state for uh, for several years, but um, I had the opportunity to go and, and switch sides. It was either go to another ski area and kind of, um, again, in the business, you, you, you most likely to move to move up, you have to move around. So it's, you know, maybe go to another ski area, bigger job, bigger mountain. And uh, I got the opportunity to be, to go down to Denver and be where I was born and raised and be the, become the first ever uh, vice president of marketing at the Denver Convention and Visitors Bureau. Okay. And uh, that was a fun experience. While I had served on uh, the CVB board for Clear Creek County as a representative of Loveland Ski Area and had participated and partnered with the local DMO uh, in Vail, it was the kind of the first real entry point into the destination marketing space, uh, certainly on the staff side and working with a really dynamic city. Um, the Mile High City, where I was born and raised, went through a really exciting transition over that time with new baseball fields, a new airport, new basketball arena. We had a, an amazing run of evolution of the community while I was there. And the irony is now I go back and I can barely recognize the city. So it's, it's yeah. continued on that path for uh, the last 20 years. That community has continued to grow, and uh, from a tourism perspective, I'm sure I, I haven't seen the numbers lately, but the work that they're doing now is much more elevated than we were doing 20 years ago, I can assure you. It was funny, I uh, Connect Travel owns and operates the e-tourism summit, and we celebrated 20 years of running the e-tourism summit this October, and one of the presentations was digital marketing and the evolution for the last 20 years, and the presenters did an amazing job, and it was pretty funny to look back and see what you know what that first website that we ever built for the Denver CVB back in, yeah, I guess it must have been ninety eight or ninety six, and how far it's evolved. And certainly, the marketing that the team at Visit Denver is doing now is much more, uh, much more advanced and much more focused than uh, what we were doing when we first started back in, I guess, ninety five. Yeah, what, boy, how the landscape has changed, and and maybe we'll talk about that a little bit uh, after after we get through kind of your your background, because because you have seen a big change and and evolution in the industry. Uh, but let's let's talk about where you went after Denver. You were you were there for several years, uh, and then where'd you go? So uh, was the VP of marketing at Denver for five years, really focused on building co op marketing, leisure marketing programs, and as you remember back in Colorado, in one of the infamous case studies in the power of tourism marketing. Uh, right at that time, the Colorado Tourism Board uh, got voted out of existence. That sunset it out. Uh, yes, Kevin Colorado, talked to us a little bit about that. Colorado Tourism uh, lost 30% of market share overnight. And um, the, the first real example of politics and the tourism industry and understanding what uh, what kind of damage can happen when there's no tourism marketing. So um, at the time, the uh, state decided to put a million or two million dollars in to funding a new Colorado tourism organization. Uh, we're obviously at, at Visit Denver were very involved in trying to make sure that that organization was set up and structured the right way and um, and really adding value to the tourism industry. And um I, I was on the advertising search committee and we looked and found and hired a new advertising firm. And about a year or so later, they recruited me over to, to run the tourism marketing for the for the state of Florida from the advertising agency side and ended up working f for that agency as kind of the VP of tourism and the VP of account service and ultimately the CM, uh, the COO of the agency. And we did Colorado tourism and some amazing work as we rebuilt that brand for five years and did, did some amazing work for Aspen and the Broadmoor and Colorado Springs and some uh, really, really cool tourism accounts uh, over that five years. So it was a, a fun evolution, again, to see the business from the operations side, to see it from the DMO side, and then to see it from the uh, 
advertising agency and PR agency side for five years. So that was a, a nice way to round out understanding what Colorado, tur- what the tourism industry looks like. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you've seen it from all angles has to, has to have played into you moving into your current role at Connect Travel, because I feel like the preparation that you got through all the different stops in your career allows you to, to put together these conferences in such a way that they are so laser focused on growth for the destination or for the destination marketer, or you've got stuff for other people, not just the marketers within the destination. So tell me how that kind of prepared you for your current role and what you're doing now. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, I've always been really focused on the the evolution of tourism marketing and it's, it's funny kind of looking, looking back to see kind of what we were thinking the future of destination marketing would be back in, uh, you know, when we were building the first website for Denver or the, second website for Colorado Tourism when I was at Preco, which is now Vladimir Jones. Um, and then uh, after five years, I spent about three years really focusing on digital tourism, marketing, consulting for the travel industry, working with destinations, working with resorts and attractions, uh, and built at the time, which was the first ever, um, it was the first ever kind of online travel magazine. And it was called SoGo Now. Okay. And that was really the beginning of understanding um about content and what the real stories are that matter to people. Uh, when you start to figure out that um, that there's a lot of other voices that are selling destination stories outside of the ad- advertising agency. And SoGo Now is a liberating experience. One of the coolest things probably um, I've ever been involved in, but it was uh, probably a good five or six years ahead of its time. So I go back and look at Wayback Machine and look at what SoGoNow.com was doing back in uh, the late 90s and think, God, that was... Uh, that was way, way ahead of its time and a, a really pretty cool product. Um, that was uh, around the late 90s. And then I got a phone call from uh, from a headhunter saying, we'd like to talk to you about a CMO job down in Florida, which uh, is probably something I'd never, never even thought about. I didn't really know what a hurricane was. And... Uh, <laughs> Ended up spending five years as the CMO at, uh, at Visit Florida, uh, where we had some uh, just an opportunity to do extraordinary things. And then that was followed by another five years as the uh, president CEO of Visit Florida. So, again, I wor- worked the, uh, the, state, the state marketing from the staff role as a CMO and a CEO, as a, an agency kind of running the staff, after, you know, running the marketing for Colorado after uh, 9-11. Um, at the city level, for CVB, at the attraction level, and then obviously at the uh, um, at the agency level. So, oh, you know, really gives me a, a unique perspective to look and see what tourism marketing has been, where it's come from, uh, where it's going to go, uh, and how uh, destinations, how destination marketers, how marketing partners. Um, there's so many people that are so smart that are helping destinations and resorts and attractions with their marketing efforts as advertising agencies, PR agencies, digital agencies, um, how they're helping create added and add value to, uh, to the destinations and the communities that they serve. And so, uh, that perspective has, has really led, uh, to a, an exciting place now where I'm not necessarily just representing an, a, one destination, you know, a Florida or a Colorado or a Denver, but allowing to kind of bring that perspective and provide uh, some ideas and some the ability to connect and stay ahead of the course of evolution and tourism and destination marketing moving forward. And that's really what we started with Connect Travel, both through kind of organic growth of new events and new programs and some acquisitions that are really strategically targeted to helping destination marketers be better. And a lot of that is founded on a pretty simple premise that the things that were working 20 years ago, the things that were working really, really well for destination marketers five years ago are not going to be the same things that successful tourism marketing people are going to be doing in the next three to five years. We're at a place in time where the successful programs of just a few years ago are no longer going to be relevant in um, the next three to five years. So if I can help all destination marketers think that way and, and work that way and then learn from each other as they're exploring and coming up with new ideas, then we'll all be better off. Yeah, let's talk about that. What are some of the major challenges of today that you're seeing that that kind of permeate throughout the industry? What are, what are people dealing with that that you feel like 
man, we, we, we need to share this with everybody, you know, uh, so that so that nobody's lagging behind. I think that there, there's this, there's issues at the at the community level that are really really important to address uh, that are changing right now. There's issues obviously with um, technology and what that is going to enable, uh, and then obviously the impacts that um, that technology is having on consumer behavior. So I guess if I started first, I'd say you know in the in the old days, you know we we a lot of destinations focused on their membership and focused on kind of their community involvement um, through membership, or even if it was, a, you know, a county or a city based, you know, that was a non membership destination organization. Um, a lot of what we had to do was promoting those partners that were engaged. And you, you remember back when, you know, the only hotels that would be listed on a destination website were those that were members and writing checks to the, the, the CVB. Um, and that and that was the case in Denver. That was the case when I got to Florida. And the reality is, you know, over time, we've learned that, you know, serving a membership is not necessarily serving the visitor. So there was a really interesting transition from are we serving our base of the people that are supporting us or are we out there to provide and add real value to the, the traveler and give them the information that they need to plan a trip. And ultimately, there was a shift towards really traveler focused marketing efforts on you know understanding uh, what it is to serve them best and that's that's evolved and I think is really in the process of evolving even further I can look back to uh, hard conversations we had five or six years ago and said if it comes down to you know 50 percent you know 51 percent but at the end of the day are we here to serve our our stakeholders or are we here to serve our visitors and you know to ultimately best serve a stakeholder, you were out to serve the visitor and provide them the information that they needed to, to make their decisions. And, um, you know, recognizing at the time, you're not going to out Google Google. So if somebody's got the opportunity to find every cool restaurant uh, in your community, but you're only listing the, you know, the 50 that are writing checks, you're not going to serve the customer as well. So there was a fundamental shift there to really opening up and, and you know serving the entire community. I think today that question would be turned on its head, and it's not necessarily what's best for the visitor, but we're tr we're going kind of three hundred sixty degrees, and now it's what's in the best interest of the community. Um, how do we best create economic development within our community, create jobs for the community, utilize the spending that visitors are bringing into the community to benefit citizens? Um, and, and create a better quality of life for the community. And so you, you, you have a lot of conversations now around, um, you know, sustainability and over tourism and how do we get the right visitors at the right time that are going to not just boost our numbers quarter over quarter or year over year so we can report record visitation for, you know, a 10th straight year, uh, but rather how do we bring in visitors that are going to best support the economy and, you know, give us a quality of life that we would ha would not have otherwise the restaurants, the attractions, the uh, shopping experiences that wouldn't be sustainable just by the population of the community that um, they reside in, but are only available because and only able to serve the community because of the visitors that are supporting them you know, financially. So let's talk about that. I think you bring up a great point, Will, and that's that a lot of these tourism destinations, especially in a small market, these, these tourism or excuse me, destination marketers their role is to generate such a large portion of the revenue for the community that asking that question, what's best for the community is okay. It's been, it's been about the visitor for so long and the visitor experience is paramount to your brand, right? And making sure that you have the best reputation that you can. But I do think it's okay to start asking the question, okay, how do we generate revenue in such a way that is going to benefit the community, especially as you start to get into the over tourism uh, issues that people are bringing up and that, that are happening because the economy is good. So travel continues to grow. Right. So how do we how do we make sure that we as destination marketers are managing that engine of generating uh, tourism and revenue for the destination uh, in such a way that it really helps the economy, right? And, and that we're doing what's best for the community. I think that's a great point. And, and it's a shift that's happening right now. It is, but, and it's, and it, it obviously varies so, so much for community to community. And I think a lot of it starts with just asking the question of the stakeholders in your community and that a, a robust destination marketing organization needs to have, you know, visionary pu public sector leadership. You need to have active, engaged private sector leadership, and then you need to have a, 
you know, a real focus on what you can do to um, to create the product and and the experiences and the services that are going to to drive demand. So, when you think about from a community perspective, um, there are a lot of destinations that uh, and and I was recently at a conference in in Florida put on by Visit Florida talking about you know areas that have over tourism and. Um, there's destinations around the you know the most visited state in the country that um, would love to have more bodies, right? And then there's yeah. others that want to have the right bodies. So you know, from one community, it might be about getting you know getting people to come and exp- spend a day uh, exploring a, a off the beaten path destination, just getting the bodies there to explore and spend some money. Other destinations are focused on you know how do we get the right people at the right time and. That may be focusing much more on a higher yield visitor, uh, where it's not about how many people I get, but how much uh, you know money I bring into the community. And I think that all starts with the the conversation that needs to have have the stakeholders at stake, the community at stake, and then um, you know the private sector uh, all having a conversation of what's right and what's best for us. It might be more people uh, at any given time, or it might be we need to really focus 100% of our effort on higher yield visitors in our in our high seasons and a um you know and a, and a concerted effort to build out the um the the low seasons or the shoulder seasons so that we can generate uh year round employment which would be a huge win for the people within the community. Yeah, great point. Engage with your stakeholders and find out what their needs are and then craft craft your plan according to that and then report on on what you do, right? Get back to them with how you're working on that. Uh, and I think as a community as a whole, you'll you'll see a, a big improvement. I want to talk about Connect Travel a little bit more. Will, I was exposed to Connect Travel for the first time when I went to your Connect Marketplace conference this past February, uh, and then I sent one of my uh, one of my executive team members to eTourism Summit uh, in San Francisco this year. And love your conferences. I think you guys do a lot of unique and interesting things, which is why I alluded earlier to. The fact that I think your experience in all aspects of, of the industry have probably helped you get get in this role and and provide a, a great product. Tell me a little bit about the mission of Connect Travel and the different types of things that you guys are doing, and then we'll kind of dive into the format of your conferences and that type of thing. Yeah, absolutely. So we're we're focused on connecting uh, marketers and destination sales folks with the people that can help them grow their business. And we do that in two different ways. Uh, it's you know from the product services, the agencies, uh, and then the, the people that are facilitating travel. So we're focused on um, a marketing component. We, and in that marketing component, we've got the Marketing Leadership Summit, which is uh, you're talking about in February. And that's where we'll uh, be in Kissimmee next February with uh, President Barack Obama as a keynote. Uh, How exciting. Yeah, I'm going to be there. I can't wait. Really powerful, uh, really powerful um, speakers there building on what we did last year with President uh, George W. Bush, which was amazing. Um, But that's really focused on the future of tourism marketing. Uh, and how do we bring, uh, you know, VPs of advertising and marketing and, uh, you know, presidents and CEOs for destinations and resorts and attractions together to think about those trends and technologies that are Im- going to impact tourism marketing in the next three to five years. And then we have a really unique way to we connect the DMOs with the suppliers that are providing ser- amazing services. And it's not just the five or six that are involved with you know hundreds of destinations around the country but a lot of smaller players that are really providing programs and and opportunities that really create value and we do that with one-on-one pre-scheduled appointments which is something i found to be incredibly valuable there's nothing in my mind that works as well as a, a meeting with intent and sitting down and spending 10 minutes to learn about what somebody else is uh, is doing and, and how they're helping solve problems within the the global ecosystem of travel marketing. And so that's a really exciting event. And we're, we're looking forward to February. And again, it's an opportunity that was born out of conversations that we had at Visit Florida, where you had a marketing team that you could sit in, in the hall at the marketing office and hear the phone ring. And it would ring from one person to the next person, the next person, the next person. It's really smart, aggressive marketing agencies and services and media companies that were just trying to break through and get through the door. But a destination marketer just doesn't have enough time to, you know, answer all those calls, much less set up a, a coffee or a 
cocktail or a lunch or a in in office presentation. So we kind of eliminated um, vendor presentations at Visit Florida and replaced them with a one day a quarter where we do all day long, you know, back to back presentations with the entire team. And it was amazing how much more you learned in that than you did in a you know a quick sales meeting or you would learn in a uh, you know at a trade show floor saying hello to you know walking by and introducing yourself to people so the model really really works to to grow and learn more about what's available in the marketplace and and how marketers can you know one think about what's coming down the pike and then two learn how um how they can you know can tap into uh different partners around the around the country to to help them meet their goals so that marketing leadership summit's been really really successful and and you mentioned the e-tourism summit which is going into its 21st year next year and we're moving it from San Francisco to Seattle and we'll be on the campus of Expedia thanks to our partnership with Expedia Media Group. Oh great. Uh, and again and that's that's really for a lot of the the people that are really in the trenches every day and how do you make uh, make your marketing efforts more successful and how do you learn from other destinations around the country what's working best for them and i think it was uh, great i was talking to a good friend that's a cmo at a at a major destination and he's like listen we we know the world is changing uh we know marketing efforts are, are going to have to change and we were willing to take risks but you know i i can't take all the risks in a year uh, so it's really valuable to learn and see what other people are doing and what they're learning uh, and learning from other destination marketers. Uh, and that has become a really, really powerful event. And so we're we're really excited to be producing that one. And then third, finally, on the marketing side, we've got a new event that was just in, uh, in October um, in San Francisco this year as well. And that's the Connect Thrive Summit. And that's really focused on community development through LGBTQ travel, sports and entertainment. And it's kind of bringing all those elements of destination together uh, and alongside a, a community that, that really has an opportunity to work together to grow a specific segment of the industry that is really, really important, I think, kind of underserved. So that's kind of our third major element in the marketing space. And then we've got another five or six that are focused on international business development and how to connect uh, destinations with the people that are um, facilitating and actually selling travel globally. And we'll have over 250 tour operators from 30 countries at our Connect Travel Marketplace in February as well. That's great. That's great. Okay. I've got a hypothesis or, or kind of a platform about conferences that I wanted to run by you and see see how you feel about it. But there's two components to going to a trade show in my mind. And one is the inspirational, right? You've got the Barack Obamas and George W. Bushes that come in and they give you this, this really interesting message that you walk away feeling inspired, right? But then the other component is the tactical, right? Like, what can I leave this conference and go back to my DMO and implement tomorrow? How do you guys take care of both of those things? Obviously, uh, I mean, you've I was there last year when when George W. Bush was there, and and you do a great job with the inspirational speakers. I think the marketplace really touches on the tactical side of things, where you get those those two minute meetings with different suppliers. Um, do, do you guys think about it that way, or how how do you think about the how to make sure that somebody walks away feeling like this was an incredible conference? Yeah, I think it really, really depends to me on the on the audience that you're trying to attract, right? So at the Marketing Leadership Summit in February, you've got the senior leadership and you, you want to inspire people, you want to push thinking ahead. I think it's really important to me to for destinations uh, and the leadership at destinations to realize, again, that core principle that what has worked for me in the last five years is not going to work for me five years from now. And the destinations that are going to be looked upon um, as vibrant and really progressive and successful five years from now, which by, you know, by all accounts is going to at some point see a, a dip, right? I mean, we're, we're, we're navigating really extraordinary times and there's been 10 years of growth and it doesn't matter what, where you are, you've seen growth in visitor volume and visitor spending uh, all across the country and across the world, but uh, there's going to be a dip and that dip's going to expose the people that are, um, just kind of continue to, to do what they've always done because that's what they've always done. So we really try to focus there on opening people's minds to what is going to happen and maybe not 
necessarily what's going to happen, but the possibilities and the, the evolution in the marketplace. And that opens up minds. And so somebody like you that's down there trying to meet new destinations and you know, get new clients and help other, other, other people um, become better marketers or expose them to new ideas or new ways of thinking, um, they're going to be much more success, you know, much more uh, open to those kind of conversations, uh, much more open to new partnerships than they would if they thought they could continue to ride the wave. So that's the fundamental belief behind the Marketing Leadership Summit. E-Tourism Summit's a little bit different. That's, again, the people that, that's the directors of marketing, the VPs of marketing, the heads of content, uh, the digital marketing folks that all know that the world is changing, all know that they want to continue to be as strategic and smart and and impactful with the limited resources that they have. But they just want to learn uh, and see from other people what, you know, what the new exciting things that are coming down the pike, the new services, but they also want to see how other peers have been successful in utilizing that and and, and creating a, a positive impact for their destination. That's awesome. Well, I, I'm glad you guys are are looking at it that way because I really did feel like walking away from your conference last year, like it hit all points for me. Uh, and, and it's good that you guys are being thoughtful about the different angles that, that you're helping someone walk away from your conference. Uh, tell me, just because this is a curiosity more than anything else, but Man, what goes into getting a George W. Bush or a Barack Obama to come speak at your conference? I can't imagine that's an easy thing to do. Not, not an easy thing. And, you know, I'll tell you what's the harder thing than, than getting a, a George W. Bush or a Barack last year and a President Obama coming up in February is what are we going to do in 2021? So that, that, that just raises the bar. I'm not sure. Yeah. How do you top Um, those two? How do you top those two? And we're kind of trying to come up with some, uh, some ideas as we speak, but obviously um, there's a value proposition for all of us. And the, the way that it works is, you know, we'll have the connect travel marketplace, which is our biggest international marketing show um, alongside the marketing leadership summit and alongside another event for business travel. So the way we're, we're able to do that is obviously by having multiple events happening at the same time so we can disperse some of the costs that are necessary. But um, it's fascinating to watch and, and just to see a president firsthand and, and have the conversation and see that a president like George W. Bush, uh, the, the amount of security that still comes uh, with the, the person and the, and the position and the respect from, you know, the uh all the folks in law enforcement is is really really remarkable and really really powerful to see the um and uh, to understand and to get to have the opportunity to to meet the and understand i think everybody that that sat and listened to president bush saw the human not necessarily the politician and i think the, if people on the right or the left realized uh, this pretty extraordinary person that had lived an amazing life and it kind of opened up all of our eyes to to, to that world yeah, really interesting stuff. I bet I bet there's a lot of meetings and phone calls that that, that people probably don't even uh, don't even realize are going on, and and then I imagine it it probably falls apart at one point in time, and you got to put it back together, and you know scheduling or or, or whatever. I've got to imagine that there's there's a lot that goes into that. There there's there's a lot, and it's a it's an exciting uh, exciting opportunity. And I think anytime you have the opportunity to listen to somebody that uh, has lived lives like like those two have both lived, and experienced the kind of things that they've lived, uh, is is inspirational and eye opening. And again, our goal is to to make people think a little bit different and and, and approach their jobs and their lives with you know maybe just a, a couple new perspectives and. Interestingly, that's, you know, kind of circling back to our first conversation, first question, that's what travel does too. Um, You know, it it does open your eyes to different ways of looking at things. And as Duncan Wardell, who will be uh, keynoting at Marketing Leadership Summit this year, the former head of innovation for Disney says, you know, nobody gets those breakthrough, really cool, powerful ideas while they're sitting in a conference room in a meeting (laughs) You know, you're getting that while you're off exercising or walking or exploring or traveling or seeing something new where your mind kind of opens up. And it will be successful if we're able to, one, open up some minds at our at our events and two, uh, make those introductions to, to partners and potential partners that can help them grow their business, uh, either from a marketing perspective or on the international side by a, a new relationship with a new tour operator that can bring a lot of new business to your destination. And uh, um that's our goal. Great. Great. Well, 
I, I really appreciate having you on. I'm looking forward to coming out to the conference in February in Kissimmee. Uh, tell me, before we let you go, just is there anything, I mean, our listeners are mostly destinations across the world. Is there any advice you can give them that maybe I haven't asked you a question uh, about that, that would help them continue to grow? Well, I think the first, the first and foremost, something I've mentioned several times is that um, we are not going to, as destination marketers, going to be successful uh, in the next three to five years doing the same things we've done for the last 5, 10, 15, 20. I don't think we've changed as fast as the environment in which we're operating has changed. Uh, and I think paying attention to the trends that are, are going to be impactful from voice search to uh, you know, AI and, and understanding and identifying the people in our industry and people outside of our industry that are doing that stuff well is, is going to be really, really important. And I think especially given the, you know, the very high likelihood that we're going to have some sort of a dip in the economy or something that will um, you know, disrupt the kind of 10-year run that we've, we've all been able to enjoy, um, it's going to be really, really important. And, and I guess the, the final piece of all of that is um, that's all the cool marketing stuff that's going to be happening in the next few years and you know how we're going to be talking to speakers and you know getting you know getting really relevant personalized information is really cool um, but ultimately taking it all the way back to why you were doing what we're doing in the first place and that's ultimately to benefit the citizens of our community and and create better qualities of life and create jobs and um, and that kind of I think is going to center a lot of what we do and and how we're going to be uh, powerful contributors to the to the lives of the the community and the residents that we live with. Great, great, great advice. Will, it's been good to have you. Hey, I really appreciate it. This has been a lot of fun and I wish you guys all the best and look forward to seeing you in uh, Kissimmee in February. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's make sure we get to connect in person. I, I, I'd look forward to meeting you. Absolutely, I will look forward to that as well. Great, well, this has been another episode of the Destination Marketing Podcast, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, great conversation here with Will Seckham from Connect Travel. Uh, just another quick reminder, uh, from a review standpoint, reviews really help us get noticed, help us continue to grow the way that we have so far. Uh, and so if you're enjoying the podcast, please leave us a review. And other than that, we'll talk to you next week.